Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, some quick words of advice that um, I found here, subhanAllah, it's really, really beneficial. I thought I'd share with you. Shaqiq al Balkhi, uh, rahimahullah, he, he had Hatim al Asam, who was a contemporary of his, who stayed with him. So Shaqiq is the Shaqiq is the, uh, the the great Shaykh and Hatim is the, uh, the the minor sort of person who's who's staying with him. He's also a great Shaykh. So what happens is that Shaqiq al Balqi rahimahullah he says to Hatim al Hassan he says, uh, "You've stayed with me for uh, a long time. So what have you actually learned from me? What have you Hatim have learned from me, Shaqiq?" So Hatim then says, "I've learned, I've learned eight, eight things, eight issues from myself, eight things that have benefited me. Now these things, Subhanallah, they will seriously um, strike a chord in us if you listen carefully, Inshallah." So he says, "The first one, he says, فَإِنِّي نَظَرْتُ إِلَى الْخَلْقِ فَإِذَا كُلُّ شَخْصٍ لَهُ محبوب. He said, "I, I looked at the creation of Allah, and I saw that everyone has got a." A beloved person. Everyone has got a beloved person. فَإِذَا وَصَلَ إِلَى الْقَبْرُ So when that person goes to the grave, فَارَقَهُ مَحْبُوبُ His beloved leaves him. فَجَعَلْتُ مَحْبُوبِ حَسَنَاتِ لِتَكُونْ فِي الْقَبْرِ مَعِي He said, because I saw the creation, whatever beloved they have, the beloved leaves them by the time they go to the grave, I made my beloved my good deeds so that they may remain with me in the grave the second thing he says i i i learned from you is i looked at allah's statement in the quran now this this statement of allah Azza wa Jal, uh, is in the quran uh, surah naziat ayah number 40 surah number 79 ayah number 40 so he says that I looked at Allah's statement that a person who denies his ego from its passions, then Allah Azza wa Jal gives them Jannah. So he says, فَأَجْهَدْتُهَا فِي دَفْعِ الْهَوَى He says, I, I exerted myself to try and remove all unlawful desires away from me until that nafs or that ego became completely, completely sort of... Um, Settled with the uh, with, with the obedience of Allah, so he says that this was something which you know Allah said, uh, your destination is Jannah if you're able to save yourself or or ward your ego from the passions and desires it has. So Subhanallah, he says that I contemplated on this and I said, okay, I'll carry on fighting my ego until the ego itself became something which was happy with the uh, with, with the obedience of Allah. So the third thing. So number one was um, the, the beloved and making sure that your beloved is your good deeds. Number two is to ward off or to keep, to keep your nafs or your ego at bay. And number three he says, فَإِنِّي رَأَيْتُ كُلَّ مَنْ مَعَهُ شَيْءٍ لَهُ قِيمَةٍ عِنْدَهُ يَحْفَظُهُ He said, I, I saw Every person who had something that was valuable to him, he was he was keeping he was safeguarding it. Then he says, "Thumma nazartu fi qawli subhanahu wa taala." He said, "I looked at Allah's statement: Ma inda kum yanfadu wa ma inda Allahi baq." This is Allah's statement in the Holy Quran, Surah An Nahl, Ayah number ninety six. Surah Surah sixteen, Ayah ninety six. He says that I looked at Allah's statement, and this statement says, "Whatever you have will perish, and whatever." is with Allah, will remain. So he says that when I contemplated on this verse, فَكُلَّمَا وَقَعَ مَعِي شَيْءٌ لَهُ قِيمَةٌ He said every, every time I got something that had value to it, وَجَّهْتُ إِلَيْهِ لِيَبْقَى لِي عِنْدَ I turned it towards Allah so that it may remain with him. Meaning that if he had something that was valuable, he gave it in the path of Allah, or he gave it to a needy person. So subhanAllah again, um, the ayah itself says, whatever is with you will perish. So whatever we've got in terms of any value will perish. But whatever we've given in terms of sadaqah or something to Allah Azza wa Jal, then it will remain with us and Allah Azza wa Jal will give us um, reward for it. So 
by contemplating on this, he started to give his valuable things to Allah so that they may remain with Allah. He'll find them in the end. That, that Hatim will find them in the end. So again, number one is to, um, you know, every, every person who has someone who is beloved to them, and he says, well, uh, it departs them from the at the grave. So I made my beloved my, my good deeds. Number two was to ward off the ego from any evil desires. And number three is to put everything that you love and you have some value of give it in the path of Allah whatever you can so that you will find it with Allah in the end number four he says فَإِنِّي رَأَيْتُ النَّاسِ يَرْجِعُونَ إِلَى الْمَالِ وَالْحَسَبُ وَالشَّرَفِ وَلَيْسَتْ بِشَيْءٍ he said I saw people they were they were returning to wealth and lineage and lineage and to try and get a good sort of you know honor or a family status or some kind of uh, dignity that they made for themselves some kind of um, title and I saw that it wasn't really anything then I looked at Allah Azzawajal, his statement in the Quran inna akramakum indallahi atqakum that surely those of you who are most honorable in the sight of Allah are those who have most who are most God conscious so this ayah again is Surah Hujurat, Surah number 49, ayah number 13. He said, when I looked at this verse, فَعَمِلْتُ فِي التَّقْوَى لِأَكُونَ عِنْدَهُ كريمة. He said, I started to uh, act upon God conscious, you know, try to be more God conscious, so that I could become someone who's noble in front of him. So the real nobleness is not in people telling you how great you are, um, the real nobleness is for a person to feel that I'm noble in front of Allah. And the only way you can do that is to be more and more away from Allah in a way that you stop yourself from sinning. Okay. Number five, he says, فَإِنِّي رَأَيْتُ النَّاسِ I saw people, they were, um, they, they, they were jealous of one another. فَنَظَرْتُ فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى He said, I looked at Allah's statement in the Quran. نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَتَهُمْ We have distributed their livelihood amongst them so this ayah is um, surah al-zukhruf surah number 43 ayah number 32 so he says i looked at this, this statement of allah that we have distributed the livelihood amongst them fataraktul hasad i left jealousy meaning that if you really think about jealousy why people are jealous of one another is because they um, find that um, Allah has given something to someone which they uh, want for themselves, but it's Allah's giving. Allah gave it to them, so be happy with what Allah wanted to give somebody else. So, so don't be jealous. So, again, quickly, uh, number one is everyone has a person who's beloved, and you make your beloved your good deeds. Number two is that everything um, uh, to, to ward off one's own ego from any evil. Number three is. That everything has a value and try and give, um, reserve your valuable things with Allah. Whatever is valuable, try and give it in the path of Allah. Number four is to remain noble in the sight of Allah. You should have taqwa or be conscious of Allah. And number five is to leave hasad jealousy because you know that Allah Azza wa Jal is distributing all his favors amongst the different people. And whoever he wills, he will give them whatever he wants. Number six, he says, رَأَيْتُهُمْ يتعادون. He said, I saw people, they... They are, you know, they are enemies of one another. For nazar tu fi qawli Allah subhanahu wa taala, he said, I looked at Allah's statement in the Quran. Inna shaytan lakum adubun fatakhiduhu aduwa. Surely shaytan is your enemy, so take him, treat him, or or make him your enemy. This is um, ayah number. Um, this is surah number Fatir, surah surah surah, surah Fatir, which is surah number thirty-five, ayah number six. Where Allah Azza wa Jal has said that Shaitan is your enemy, so treat him or make him your enemy. فَتَرَكْتُ عَدَاوَتَهُمْ وَاتَّخَذْتُ الشَّيْطَانَ وَحْدَهُ عَدُوَّهُ He says, I left, I left the enmity of people and I took Shaitan as my single enemy. SubhanAllah. So any enmity we have between ourselves, you can just, you know, divert your enmity towards the Shaitan and that will be, that will be it. That's, that's, that's your one and you know, greatest enemy that you have. And then he says, the seventh one. رَأَيْتَهُمْ يَذِلُّونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ فِي طَلَبِ الرِّزْقِ He says that I saw them, I saw people lowering themselves to try and get their livelihood. 
فنظرت في قوله تعالى I looked at Allah's statement وما من دابة في الأرض إلا على الله رزقها This is an ayah in uh, Surah Hud, ayah number 6 So Surah number 11, ayah number 6 That there is no creature on the earth except Allah has taken it, take it on He has taken it on himself to try and provide to provide that creature with what it needs. Now he says, I looked at that ayah of Allah and فَاشْتَغَلْتُ بِمَا لَهُ عَلَيَّ وَتَرَكْتُ مَا لِي عَنْهُ He says, I started to occupy myself with the duties I have towards him and the duty that Allah has taken on himself to provide me, I left that to him, meaning that Allah would provide me for my sustenance on this uh, on this earth. So that's his, you know, he, he's taking that on himself, so he, so he will provide me. And the final thing he says, the, the eighth one he says, رَأَيْتَهُمْ مُتَوَكِّلِينَ عَلَى تِجَارَتِهِمْ وَصَنَائِعِهِمْ صَنَائِعِهِمْ وَصِحَّةِ أَبْدَانِهِمْ He says, I saw people depending on their business, their craftsmanship and their health. Uh, because, you know, if you don't have business, if you don't have uh, skill, if you don't have good health, then, you know, you, you don't have hardly anything. So he says, فَتَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ uh, Ta'ala, he says, well, I then just depended on Allah. Why depend on, you know, you should have a business fine or you can have a, uh, you should have a skill or good health, that's fine. But don't depend on that. The dependence should be purely on Allah. So again, eight things of Hatim. Number one is that um, everyone has someone who's beloved and they leave them by the time they go to the grave. So why not make your beloved your good deeds? Number two, why not uh, ward your ego off from evil de desires until it gets settled with Allah Azza wa Jal. Number three, everything has a good value and if you want to see that value in the future, in the Akhirah, then give it to Allah in terms of Sadaqah and you will see it. Number four, um, in terms of dignity and so on, or getting a good uh, name on this earth, whether it's through wealth, or whether it's through lineage, or whether it's through a title, he says that Allah's statement um, tells us that if we are God conscious, then we will be able to be most noble in his sight. Number five is, is knowing that Allah distributes his rizq and his provisions between people. There's no point of being jealous of anyone. Number six, knowing that shaitan is our greatest enemy. Just take him as your enemy and leave all enmity of people besides him. Number seven, um, when you know that you've got um, people that are busying themselves in trying to get the risk which we need to do anyway but the best thing is that don't forget your portion on this earth which is to try and worship Allah Azza wa and in return of that Allah Azza wa will give you um, you know what, what you what you um, have already got from the beginning that he will give you your provisions and number eight is don't just depend on the material things around you which is your business and your health and so on to continue depend on Allah Azza wa Jal, who is the controller of your business of your skills and of your health anyway Jazakum Allah Khair for listening hope that was beneficial Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh